We thought we'd take a, a moment and do a few lessons on some of the techniques that are used in Dimensions for Tambourine. The inspiration for this piece was actually I was teaching a group of high school students all the different techniques and possibilities that you can use on tambourine and uh, through that process uh, the dimensions of tambourine was written. So uh, utilizing this piece actually will give you the opportunity to really get a handle on all the different options that are available for tambourine. So the first thing that we're going to start with is in the first two measures of the piece Every member of the seven member ensemble has a shake roll on a different count. So to facilitate the shake roll, you first start with the tambourine on a 45 degree angle, and that just allows sort of the gravity to rest the jingles against the head so there's no extraneous sounds. And then the beginning of each shake roll should start with a fist attack, which hits the bottom of the tambourine to vertical, which will actually allow more sustain in the jingles and then at the release of the roll we take the fist and release back on the note notated so that you get this effect and each player starts their roll on a different count so you're going to get one, two, three. you're going to get the attack sound and also the release sound at the beginning of each of those shake rolls in measures three through twelve on dimensions uh, this section utilizes a very pianissimo or piano playing, so you need to have a very light touch. And again, we're going to hold the tambourine on a 45 degree angle to allow the gravity of the jingles to remain solitary. Um, there's a couple different options that you can, you can actually try to experiment with yourself. But what I've had the performers do on this section is actually rest the back of their hand on the head of the tambourine and use two or three fingers to play this part. The difference is if you take the back of your hand off the tambourine, you'll actually start to get some of the tone and a little bit of a, uh, a longer sound out of each um, note because you're going to get the pitch of the head. And then additionally, I'm keeping my fingers on the back of the head to sort of help dry out the sound as well. So here's your options. Rest the back of the hand. I try to play with my fingers over a jingle. Keeping my fingers together. Or so it's your choice, but those are some options that you have during measures 3 through 12. In measures 13 through 14, it's indicated that thumb rolls should be used. So to actually practice the thumb roll, first you just need to actually practice the art of thumb rolling, which if you take your thumb like you're a hitchhiker, sometimes a lot of players like to lick it just to kind of help create some friction, put it along the side of the tambourine, and then it's real important not to press too hard. Just allow the thumb to sort of dribble over the top. A lot of players, when they first start learning a thumb roll, they actually put too much pressure. And they get a very uneven buzz and even sometimes no buzz at all. So just lightly take your thumb and move around the outside. And you want to keep your non-dominant hand stationary. So you want to hold the tambourine as stationary as possible. In this piece, we actually have a notated release. So at the end of the thumb roll, you would actually take the back of your hand and release to a note. And that actual release per player is going to create a composite rhythm as well in the piece. In measures 19 through 22, players five through seven actually have, they each have their own rhythm that they should play with fingers on the tambourine. However, their independent rhythms will create a composite rhythm of uh, two sixteenths and an eighth. But each performer has a separate note of that. So the player five has the one, player six has E, and player seven has uh, and. 
So you just wanna make sure that each one of those um, notes is clearly presented so that we have an even sound when playing that rhythm through that section. At letter B, there's an indication that the next few styles are uh, styles that are the pandero style, which originates from Brazil. And there's two different approaches to this. The first, the rhythm is one, and triplet two, and triplet three, triplet and four, triplet and triplet one. So actually you're gonna take your tambourine at this point and make it completely horizontal. You're gonna take your fingers and use the fingers for the eighth notes. And then you're gonna use a, almost a full arm not really riffs. It's not as accurate and uh, the execution of the rhythm, the articulation is not as clear if you use riffs. So you're going to want to use like your arm as if it's 11. To use the two notes to fill in the triplet. So it just takes a little practice of playing eight notes. So the jingles hit the top part of the tambourine for the first filler note in the triplet and the bottom for the second. It's kind of hard to do slow, but I'll do my best. And that's how you try to get the articulation of letter B. of letter B is actually utilizing the another uh, style used in Brazilian tambourine playing and that is using what's indicated in the music as thumb, finger, back of the hand, finger. And I also have my fingers on the other side of the tambourine pressed against the head just to help dry that out a little bit. So an exercise you can do to practice that is I like to use with my students is playing quarter notes. One, two, so they really get an idea of that motion slow to eight notes. And that's just a little beginner exercise that you can do with the students. Ideally, that's going to take a little bit of practice for them to to play that motion, 16th notes, that quickly. But if you use that exercise, I think that will help. You can also let go of the back of the tambourine if you want to pitch off when the thumb attacks as well. So here's another option. Try, open. And that's the two techniques you try in dimensions for letter B, the pandero style. Okay, as you transition into letter C of dimensions for tambourine, you actually, letter C is played with the tambourine upside down, um, supported on the knee because it's very soft and quick. So to get to that point, there's actually a little bit of a transition in measure 35. In measure 35 on the score, it's indicated that each player flips and there's actually a note that we want to hear that flip. And that creates uh, a composite rhythm as well down the line, plus it gives the performers an opportunity to get their tambourine in the right place for the next section. Um, when we get to letter C, uh, it's best if the tambourine is horizontal on the knee, on the thigh actually. And I'll use my arms and my outside two fingers to help support the tambourine and to keep it level. And then I'll use my two fingers directly above two jingles, and that just tries to help in, uh, the articulation be a little clearer. And so the next section is play very soft, it's kind of quick, and it's... But it's really important to kind of support that tambourine with your forearms and your outside fingers so you can get a really nice, clear, crisp rhythm. The last technique utilized in this piece is the knee fist. And the knee fist uh, technique on tambourine is utilized when you're playing at a uh, dynamic level of mezzo forte or forte fortissimo and very quick uh, parts notated. So 
to play a knee fist, you want to take the tambourine and put it on sort of a 45 degree angle because you want it to attack the knee really at the bone because the knee is actually going to create sort of your second hand because we only have one hand. So that attack against the knee bone is like your second hand. So some players, when they first learn, they actually try to do that with the tambourine too parallel against the thigh and they don't get a very articulate uh, rhythm. And to do this, you just take your dominant hand and you keep your tambourine on a 45. And I like to start with my dominant hand because it feels like almost like a right hand lead system. But you can just practice simple rhythms. I would encourage you to just practice some rhythms first before you try to play the part uh, in this particular piece. When we use knee fist in the beginning of this piece, two performers at each time have a solo. The first and the seventh performer solo uh, is like this. There's some pretty quick 30 second notes in there. So what I try to encourage my students to do is think about what the right hand plays on 30 second notes. They actually play 16ths. So instead of going, I will have them practice a few times. So that rhythm really comes out clear and they can kind of figure out that pathway of the right hand. That just kind of helps push through those 30 second notes. So that's the knee fist technique. To recap, start with the dominant hand first against the bony part of the knee. And then you just try to uh, incorporate evenness, just as you would on a snare drum, the right hand to left hand uh, evenness in a rhythm. You don't want the dominant hand to be too strong, like. But. And that'll just take practice. I want to wish you a lot of luck and have fun with Dimensions with Tambourine.